Okay, we're back in our stock room. Today we're going to show you some stuff about wave resonance in strings and the physics of that. So it's pretty interesting. We have here a string set up and we've got here a weight to produce a certain amount of tension in the string. And we have here a string vibrator that is connected to a sine wave generator. Right now I have it set to pretty low amplitude, so I'm going to raise the amplitude and you're going to see here the vibrations are going to increase. Okay. And the frequency I have here is we're starting really low at about 3 hertz. And I'm going to start increasing the frequency till I get a good resonance. And according to physics, the first resonance should occur when half a wavelength of the wave of the string fits within the length of the string. So half a wavelength. So go up, go up, go up and we should begin to see the first resonance occurring soon roughly at about 5.8 hertz so if you come and see here the instrument is showing 5.8 hertz which is 5.8 cycles per second so this uh, string vibrator is vibrating up and down 5.8 times per second and you can see a half a wavelength these two points are called the node, where is the point of minimum amplitude. And this point is a point of maximum amplitude is called the antinode. So half a wavelength is fitting within one complete length of the string. So if I now increase the frequency, it's going to start to die down. You see, kind of you have destructive interference going on, so it really doesn't resonate. So the next time it should resonate again is double the frequency. So I should go to roughly about 11.6, right? So come and see here. Roughly at about 11 point, I'm going up by increments of 0.1. So roughly about 11.6, somewhere about there. I should see a good, you have a, a node another nice node here in the middle a node you could see a complete wavelength so you have the anti-node coming down going back down going back up and then this is the other side of it that uh, the other half uh, this is a complete wave and this is also a complete wave so you're basically seeing two packets here so this is a one complete wave fits within the length of the string I'm not going to show you all of them let's skip go to about 10 times the uh, frequency that's going to be 58 so I am now at 58 which is 10 times the original uh, known as ten, uh, the fundamental frequency so this is 10 times the fundamental frequency you can see here half another half so that's two another half that's three another half that's four another half that's five another half that's six another half that's seven another half eight another half nine another half ten so ten complete half wavelengths which means five full waves now I want to show you what effect it would have if I increase the tension so I increased I added 20 grams so now notice what, if you come here, and if we play with the frequency a little bit, we can see it nice. So we're going to have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what that did is it decreased the resonating frequency so that now only nine, uh, nine of a half a wavelength was able to fit. So when you increase the tension, According to physics, you increase the velocity of waves in that string, and therefore you increase the wavelength. So if you increase the wavelength, less waves can fit within that string. So this is, uh, this is why when you tune an instrument, as you increase the tension in that instrument, it should uh, resonate at lower and lower frequencies. So now I want to show you another version of this. Okay, we have a rubber band here. We have a bunch of uh, 
uh, rubber bands that are placed by nails, okay, and we have a central rubber band, with it, which is a pretty tense rubber band. We got this idea, we saw it in a magazine called the Physics Teacher Magazine, so it illustrates the circular version of this. And that it died down. So roughly, right about somewhere here, we are getting the first resonance about 50.3 hertz, 50.4 hertz. So now you can see here the node. This point is not moving. Then it's getting maximum, maximum resonating. This is the anti-node. And about the opposite point of that, roughly about here, is the next node. So you have the half a wavelength, another node, and another half a wavelength. So one complete wavelength, you can see here, you see the anti-node, and then you have the node. So you have one complete wavelength fits within the circumference. This is equivalent to the n equals 2 orbit. This is very interesting to see and to visualize the atom. So now we go higher frequency. Okay, actually that was even better. This one right here. Yeah, this one is even... This one, the anti-node is even more noticeable. And uh, here's the node and node again. So this one, uh, now I'm going to go increase it. Increase it. Of course, it's going to die down, destructive interference. So we should soon begin to see the n equals 2 orbit. here right there so we're getting it at about 67 Hertz so you can see here the node anti-node then you can see here the node anti-node node anti-node anti -node, node so let's see here let's count we start with the node okay we have a uh, half a wavelength a node then another half a wavelength node, so that's one wavelength, another half a wavelength node, another half a wavelength back to the original node, so four half of wavelengths, that's, that's uh, two waves, two complete waves of the string fit. So let's see if we could get, catch the three. Let's see, it's going to get harder to see as we increase the frequency, roughly it should occur soon here. We passed it. So it's about 80. So this is going to be the n equals 3 orbit. Okay, roughly here we go. So we start here, this is a much harder to see. We have here a node, half a wavelength, a node, half a wavelength, node. Let's see if we can see this any better. This is the best. This is the best one right here. So we have a node, anti node, and then we have here another half, another half, another half, another half, and another half. So one half is a two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves. Much harder to see, but I did count six halves. So that's going to be three complete waves. And if I keep going, of course, it's going to get harder and harder to see. You should be able to get more and more wavelengths. So you could, this is an awesome uh, tool to really visualize the de Broglie waves and how the electron can fit in different orbits uh, and how 